What are the implications of blockchain technology for our future? Are most blockchain use cases a solution looking for a problem? Or have we yet to realize what makes blockchain revolutionary? Hello, I'm Crypto Casey, and in this video, we are going to explore what blockchain is, why it benefits individuals like you and I over big corporations, and how it could change the world as we know it forever. This video was inspired by an interview I saw with PhD macroeconomist Natasha Shea. So be sure to check out her Twitter account and give her a follow for more amazing crypto content. Be sure to check out our sponsors, Afani, NordVPN, and Ledger. Protect your cell phone from SIM swapping attacks using Afani's secure mobile services. Protect your data, privacy, and crypto investments by using virtual private network services with NordVPN. And protect your long-term crypto holdings with cold storage hardware wallets provided by Ledger. Check them all out by using the links in the description area below. Awesome. Let's explore how tokenization of digital assets on the blockchain will revolutionize our daily lives in the future. Let's start out by exploring a concept we are familiar with and then add a twist in order to understand how and why people will start adopting Web3 technology. We are all familiar with loyalty programs offered by airlines. In order to incentivize people to use their airline company over another one when traveling, they have rewards programs that allow customers to accumulate airline miles when they choose to fly with them over time to use at a later date. And how this is set up at a very basic level is we have an account with each individual airline that is linked to our name, email, address, etc. Each account is managed by each individual airline. We can't give our miles away to other people. We can't sell our miles for money. We can't trade our miles to use on a different airline. Basically, we individually have miles we can use or eventually lose. The airlines are in complete control over their prospective loyalty programs. Simple enough, right? Cool. Now for the twist. Let's imagine that instead, we are in complete control and have full ownership of each mile we accumulate. And then imagine that as we all accumulate miles for all these different airline companies, there's a way we could sell our miles to other people or trade miles with other people. So imagine instead of just having the option to use the miles ourselves or lose the miles, that as we accumulate them, there is a marketplace where we can choose to sell them for instant cash. Or if a ticket for a 300 mile trip was going to cost $300 when buying directly through Delta, and on this marketplace, you found someone offering to sell 300 Delta miles from rewards they had accumulated for $200, and you end up saving $100 on your trip. Interesting twist, right? Well, that is an example of how airline miles in the form of tokens on a blockchain could operate and benefit customers over businesses. And you may be asking yourself, why would an airline company do that? What's in it for them? Well, when designing these tokens, you can actually program them to be sophisticated contracts. So let's imagine that Delta issues rewards miles in the form of tokens on a blockchain. And each time a token is bought or sold on the secondary market, they programmed 5% of the sale to go back to Delta as a form of revenue. So now, instead of people just simply using or losing miles Delta gives them, now these rewards miles are a new source of income for Delta that they otherwise wouldn't have generated. Nice. So that is just one extremely simplified example of how adoption of digital assets like cryptocurrencies or tokens in Web3 at large could start being adopted by consumers in the real world. And just like when Google and Facebook first came out, certain businesses started experimenting with them and spending money on advertising on their platforms. The first few companies that took the risk received a lot of heavily undervalued attention. And once other businesses saw their success and started advertising on Facebook and Google as well, the market became saturated. Advertising prices soared. And now advertising on Google and Facebook is something you pretty much have to do as a business to survive. And as a result, returns from advertising on the platforms have diminished for businesses. This is the exact same process that will happen with Web3. And as we have been seeing over the past several months, some companies have started experimenting like Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, Nike, Adidas, and Gary Vaynerchuk's companies like VFriends for his VCon event. Tokenization has occurred and will continue to occur with innovative companies taking the risk, exploring digital assets like NFTs as new growth mechanisms. And if these companies succeed, 
other companies will follow suit. Each company will try different approaches to tokenomics, like how they decide to distribute tokens, how the tokens integrate with their products and services, and all of these factors will ultimately determine how much value they bring to the market. And at the end of the day, here's the deal. For mass adoption of blockchain technology, like digital assets and NFTs to happen, we need to get people using the technology in their daily lives who are not interested in trading tokens, not interested in investing in speculative assets, and are not technologically savvy. How will this happen? Through the integration of this tokenization concept in Web2 products and services, like we discussed in the tokenized airline loyalty program example. If you travel and fly a lot, would you rather have airline miles you can only use or lose, or airline miles you can either use, sell at any time, trade at any time, give as a gift to a friend or family member at any time, etc.? Yes, that answer is pretty obvious for the most part, and yes, it assumes that the user interface and crypto wallet challenges have been overcome, and solutions to these obstacles are inevitable and closer to fruition than you think. So, as investors in the space, the two most valuable things we can do is continue to increase our knowledge about the technology and foster patience. Because we are still at an extremely primitive level when it comes to Web3 development. And because of that, the concept of tokenizing assets on a blockchain that can be bought and sold on secondary markets within a peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure is very abstract. So at the time of this video, we don't have many good real life examples of this actual value underlying existing tokens. We have projects utilizing tokenization. However, we haven't achieved the mass majority of tokens being backed by or having actual value in the real world. Projects are creating tokens without the projects having any real user demand or value added factor. So the most sustainable bull case for blockchain tech in the consumer world is by combining this tokenization concept with products and services that have a value added factor and give representation of that value on a public blockchain platform. Currently, we've got experiments going on with play to earn games. However, they are lacking that value added factor because people are not choosing to play them because they are addictive, relaxing, or because people enjoy gaming, which are the valuable attributes of traditional games. Play to earn games right now are just a more active form of yield farming and are not really sustainable in their current form. So here's the key thing we need to understand and keep in mind as crypto investors while this new exciting technology continues to develop over time. The best way to think about blockchain is to consider it the internet of value. It allows for the creation of public, open, permissionless platforms that allow all of us to transact directly with each other, peer to peer, and allows any type of value to be exchanged with a unified standard, like the ERC20 tokens on the Ethereum network. This means that anyone on the platform can create a representation of value in the form of a token that can be traded with any other values around the world. Tokenization with liquidity will allow for an unfathomable amount of innovation, giving a sense of tangibility and representation to so many unknown and hidden values created in society. And this will create an additional layer of GDP or gross domestic product within societies, create new professions and create investment classes like what we've already seen with this new speculative digital assets class we are all in together. With tokenization and liquidity, any kind of asset can be represented on the blockchain in the form of a token and will allow for the creation of secondary markets, which will greatly benefit regular people like you and I over big corporations. So the biggest question right now, since we are still so early in the development phase, is where this new blockchain based future will be built. Each and every one of the current layer one and two networks like Ethereum versus Cardano versus Solana versus Polygon are experimental technology. All of their infrastructure are years away from handling a mass adoption of blockchain as the internet of value. Everything we are experiencing right now is the first rendition of what a blockchain based internet of values could look like and we have achieved proof of concept at best. And that fact should be extremely encouraging because we've got a few years to, as we've been discussing throughout this bear market together, increase our knowledge, income, and build relationships with each other 
that are true patrons in the space instead of flighty tourists. All in all, the opportunity to generate a substantial amount of wealth over a three year, five year, or anything less than 10 years is an amazing once in a lifetime opportunity we are fortunate enough to experience and take advantage of. The entire crypto space is still at a mere $1 trillion in total market cap. It's growing extremely quickly in relation to past technological advancements and will create a world with more assets we can invest in, more professions we can consider, everything will be tradable, assets will be programmable, and the world will change immensely, hopefully for the better. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell notification to stay up to date on all of the latest content. So what did you think about the airline loyalty program analogy? Are you able to wrap your head around the power of tokenization and liquidity on a blockchain network? Or do you think we should flesh out these concepts together in more depth? Let me know in the comments below. Be safe out there. Thank you.